Hi, hold on, Bowen here. Now, I often get this question from my 3D students. How do you save rendering time? So I decided to make a short video here and answer the question. Now, how do you save at least 50% 3D graphics rendering time without losing quality and without rendering at a lower screen resolution? So this is keeping the quality, keeping the size and still saving at least 50% rendering time. And often this goes up to 90% or more. So recently I made this render here and I saved lots of rendering time by using layers. All right, layers. And layering is one of the best secrets when it comes to speeding up your workflow. And not just the workflow, but also rendering time. You can save, I say, at least 50% rendering time, but usually it's more than that. And I usually save 80 or 90% rendering time. And I do that by breaking up my image into pieces, into layers. I can render individually, okay? So this particular render has two lights. One of them is the ceiling light behind Victoria, our model here. Another one is from the front acting as a fill light, all right? And those two have been rendered separately. Now, as you may know, each time you add lighting, you're gonna add, you're gonna have some tweaking going on. I mean, that's just unavoidable. You're gonna have some, some level of tweaking. Now, imagine this render had 10 lights, all right? And you make some adjustments to just one of them. Instead of re-rendering the whole image with 10 lights, and you know how much longer that takes, you're just gonna re-render a single light layer, okay? And as you may predict here, a single light is gonna render 10 times faster, all right? So when you make that small adjustment, you just add one-tenth of your rendering time instead of re-rendering the whole image. So actually it's more than 90%. You're gonna save a lot more. You're gonna save an insane amount of rendering time. And what this then ends up with is that once you load those individual layers into Photoshop, you start with a black, with a black uh, layer at the bottom. You then just stack your layers on top of each other and you use the uh, screen blending mode, okay? When you have that screen blending mode, you can then use the opacity slider here to fine tune how much intensity that particular layer you want to have. Now, this is my second layer. This is the second light I rendered, and this is the filler. And you see how easy I can control how much of it I have especially when I have those two combined, I can easily fine tune the precise mix I want to have. Do I want to have more fill light or less of it? And I, I'm doing all this in fractions of seconds. I'm just readjusting the layer intensity. And this is saving me hours and hours and hours of rendering time, all right? Now, I've also added here so the one, what kind of layers are the ones you render in 3D, okay? Then you have layers you produce in Photoshop or the GIMP or any software you're using for layering. And here I've created, I'm just bring this down back to 40. Here I created a few glow layers. And these layers are for, for adding this uh, glow effect here in, in, in the background. So I just added those to the back light or the ceiling light. So this is just incredible control. I mean, it's insane. So this is what I love about layers. They are so beautiful at adding quick, uh, precise control. Now, a very cool trick is to use um, addition layer here that helps to draw the impact, the uh, that helps to draw our eyes to the center of the image. So I have a kind of a border around the image that is darkened. You can just add a small touch to that, okay? Don't go overboard because it's gonna be noticeable. The best effects are not visible, all right? So just 
be gentle about this. Alright, if you're looking for more free 3D lighting tricks and tips, you can go to 3dlightmaster.com and download my free ebook 5 Steps to Stunning 3D Lighting in any software. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.